The presidential candidate of the Social Democratic Party, Mr. Donald Duke, is the latest candidate to sign the peace accord ahead of the 2019 elections. Mr. Duke, who was absent during the official signing ceremony on Tuesday, signed the document in the presence of the director of the Kuka Center, Father Atta Barkindo. Initiated by the National Peace Committee, the accord is aimed at committing the candidates and their political parties to peaceful elections. And after signing the accord, Mr. Duke said he's delighted that most of the presidential candidates have signed and he hopes the outcome will be similar to that of the 2015 presidential election. And the Social Democratic Party on Oyo State has thrown its weight behind the flag bearer of the People's Democratic Party, Shei Makinde, adopting him as the preferred governorship candidate ahead of the 2019 elections. Addressing delegates of the SDP in Ibadan, the state capital, the National Financial Secretary of the party, Kende Ayola, says the endorsement was born out of the conscious need for synergy among opposition parties to achieve victory in the coming election. Delegates from the 33 local government areas in Oyo State are attending the convention of the Social Democratic Party in Ibado, the state capital. Although a mini convention, this announcement by one of the party's executives carries weight. We are endorsing engineer Shei Makinde because we trust. We trust that he is the only person on the field today in Oyo State that can deliver quality governance. The motivation behind the party's decision is explained. Most families cannot make end meet because of unemployment and lack of viable business opportunity. Those with employment, especially with the state government, have not been paid as when due to today. Salary areas of workers in our tertiary institution unpaid for upwards of 18 months now. Apart from education, there are other sectors these party members believe the current administration could have handled better. Promises made, support pledged, but the biggest hurdle comes in a little over 60 days when action, and not just words, will count the most. And staying with politics, the governorship candidate of the All Progressives Grand Alliance in Abia State, Dr. Alex Oti, has asked the people of the state to be prepared for the change that will bring great transformation to the state. Mr. Oti stated this while addressing his supporters and party loyalists in Omahia, the Abia State capital, as he flags off his campaign for the governorship seat ahead of the elections. It all started with a walk from the Secretariat of the All Progressive Grand Alliance in Abia State. And then the campaign train heads for the venue of the rally, where a crowd of party loyalists from across the 17 local government areas of the state received Dr. Alex Oti, his wife Priscilla, his running mate Uche Eme, and other chieftains of the party. The state chairman of the All Progressive Grand Alliance opens the floor, highlighting the mission of the party in Abia State and the mission statement of the party's candidate. The candidate of Abga, the Abga has presented to you, in the person of Dr. Alex Oti, is standing with his two legs. Yeah. And that is the only thing that can redeem Abia State. And then, the deputy national chairman, south of the party, Uche Naokubo, as well as the vice presidential candidate of the party, Jerry Chukweke. He is a seasoned banker. Yes, and they know where the money is, and they know how to use it. Can you give what you don't have? We need prudence and effective management of scarce resources. That is what you get. And you do it in a disciplined way. The governorship candidate on his part speaks on his readiness to serve the people if elected, promising all-round development, particularly in the area of infrastructure. Abia has been a caricature of states. It has been the least developed state in the southeast 
and maybe Nigeria. So we thank God that we have an opportunity to change the rock that is at your state. And we are going to do it. Please hold on. We must do it. It is a task that must be done. And we have started the journey today. Dr. Alex Otis' campaign for the governorship seat in Abia State continues as he tours all the local government areas of the state with his message of quality leadership and accountability. Members of the African Action Congress are protesting the exclusion of their presidential candidate, Omoyele Shore, from the presidential debate organized by the Nigerian Elections Debate Group and the Broadcasting Organizations of Nigeria. While protesting at Channel Television's premises today, they say the exclusion of AAC from the debate goes against the constitutional rights of their candidate. The protesters demanded the inclusion of Mr. Shore in the debate. this protest is to demand that Shorere should be included in the debate just like every other candidate and in addition and in addition and in addition well if the mainstream media if the mainstream media if the mainstream media does not do its constitutional job to ensure all candidates are ahead you guys, what happens is that the Nigerian people will neglect them and we are going to go for an alternative. Meanwhile, the Nigeria Elections Debate Group has reacted to criticism on its criteria for selecting parties for the presidential debate. In a statement released by the group, the choice of the participating parties for the debate was made from three stages, which include an independent online poll, distribution of survey questionnaires, and an aggregate collation of the results of the first two stages. Refuting allegations of bias, the group states in a quote, we wish to emphatically state that the NEDG and BON were not influenced or induced by anyone to include or exclude any political party from the debate. We understand the disappointment of some political parties who would have wished to see their candidates share their visions for the country at the debate. However, Nigerians have spoken through the multi-stage process and we urge all Nigerians to respect their choice as we abide by the outcome of the independent party selection process, end of quote. The vice presidential debate and the presidential debate are scheduled for Friday, December the 14th, 2018 and Saturday, January the 19th, 2019, respectively. Now let's cross over to Abuja. Here's Ibrahim Adra. Ibrahim. Many thanks indeed, Ijoma. Let's start from the National Assembly, where two members of the Senate leadership are disagreeing over the exact number of senators in the two major political parties, that is the APC and the PDP. The disagreement occurred during Thursday's plenary session when Majority Leader Senator Ahmed Lawan drew the attention of the Senate to a newspaper report, which he argues gave an incorrect figure of senators in the APC. Our correspondent Linda Higbe reports. The Senate is made up of 109 federal lawmakers. At the inception of the 8th Assembly on June 9, 2015, there were 59 senators from the ruling All Progressives Congress, APC, and 49 senators from the opposition PDP. One lawmaker from Bronu State, Ahmed Zana, died before his swearing in. But in the last six months, several senators have defected to other political parties changing the total number of lawmakers belonging to each party. The biggest wave of defection took place in July 2018, where 13 senators defected from the ruling APC to the PDP. There is confusion as to the exact number of lawmakers in the two major political parties, and this comes up during Thursday's legislative proceedings, when the majority leader draws the attention of the Senate to a recent news report. The Daily Trust of today reported on pages 5 and 7 uh, some erroneous uh, information on what happened here yesterday and uh, the situation in the Senate. On page 5, it is reported that the APC senators are 57 and PDP senators 58. For the request, Mr. President, APC senators are 56 and PDP senators are 46. But the Deputy Senate President, who is presiding over plenary, has a contrary view. 
Then the issue of the number, I don't think there's any particular statistics you know, in respect of how many members you have in any particular party. There's no such statistics for now. The remarks by Deputy Senate President Ike Kuremadu as regards the absence of available statistics on the exact number of lawmakers in each political party in the Senate is puzzling to keen observers of Parliament, as it is curious that the leadership is reluctant to state the exact number of lawmakers belonging to each party. The National Assembly website has not been helpful in this regard. The website has not been updated to reflect the recent defections, as some lawmakers who defected recently are still listed under their former political parties. Linda Akibi, Channels Television News. Meanwhile, the House of Representatives has summoned the Minister of Finance, Zainab Ahmed, and the Minister of State for Petroleum, Ibe Kachuku, to appear before it next week Thursday over alleged and budgeted funds being paid as fuel subsidy. Also summoned by the Joint Committee on Finance and Petroleum Downstream are the Group Managing Director of the Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation, the NNPC, as well as heads of the DPR, PPPRA, and the Petroleum Equalization Fund. Members of the committee reached the decision following failure of government officials to appear before it, despite several invitations. The joint panel had been mandated by the House to probe allegations that despite the current administration's claims that it had removed petroleum subsidy, billions of naira are still being paid without being budgeted for.